Hi there, thanks so much for joining me today. If you're new here, my name is Molly. I'm an editor based out of the San Francisco Bay Area. And this channel is a place where I share all of my recent makes and inspirations. Today is the first in a series of videos that I'm going to make about gift knitting ideas. Winter is slowly approaching. The weather is finally starting to change here in the Bay Area. It's getting a little bit colder. It's definitely getting darker earlier thanks to daylight savings time ending or beginning. I never... ending. I never remember which one is which, but whichever one happened, we fell back an hour and it's dark at like 5 p.m. now. So even though we have a pretty mild climate, I think I'm really starting to get into the winter spirit. Not to mention that when you're planning on knitting a lot of gifts, it pays to start early. I don't usually knit too many gifts myself. I knit a lot of baby items, but besides that, I don't give too many things, just an occasional set of socks, a hat, a scarf or cowl, something like that. And when I'm looking at gift knits, I'd like it to be something that I can do pretty quickly and use not that much yarn for. Knitting as a craft obviously requires quite a bit of time. It's possible to invest quite a bit of money in your yarn, although you don't necessarily have to. So when you're knitting a gift, something big obviously can be very prohibitive in terms of your time and your cost. So this year I want to talk about what you can do with about 100 grams of yarn at different weights. Different yarns vary in yardage per gram. Of course you have some balls of yarn that are 50 grams, 25 grams even, versus 100. So this won't necessarily work across the board for one single skein of yarn, but my aim is for about 100 grams. And today I'll be focusing on fingering and sport weight yarn, and I'll be making videos about DK and worsted and bulky and super bulky that will come out over the next few days. When I was looking at patterns for this, my cutoff was 425 yards for fingering weight yarns and about 350 or so for sport weight yarns. If something has multiple sizes, it's possible that not all sizes will take only 100 grams, often only the smaller sizes will, which is part of why I've stayed away from things like garments for adults because I like to highlight size inclusive patterns and of course the larger sizes are going to use more yarn which is a whole other issue in and of itself but today I just am mostly focusing on accessories and baby knits. It was also really important for me to include quite a few free patterns in this list. When I'm making something for someone else it's not necessarily always something that I would want to make for myself and I think it's nice to be able to pick up a free pattern evaluate it, you can decide against using it without feeling too bad about it and move on to the next one so that you're able to meet someone's needs without breaking the bank and buying a bunch of different patterns that maybe you personally wouldn't want to use for yourself. So there's both free and paid patterns on this list as well. Two notes before I start talking about the specific patterns on my list. I didn't include any sock patterns today. I think socks are always a good option for a one skein gift. If you have that kind of investment, they can take m most or all of a single skein. And I know I sometimes suffer from second sock syndrome, so they can be like an iffy gift for me to knit for someone else. Even to knit for myself, I suffer from second sock syndrome a lot, so I think if you're interested in socks, there are a lot of patterns out there. I have released videos in previous years with other gift ideas and videos about free patterns that I have actually knit up myself, and in those I've mentioned some free sock patterns that would be a good place for you to get started if you're looking for socks, so I'll make sure to link those videos. I also want to quickly talk about one of my favorite accessories designers, Casey Herlihy. I didn't include any of her patterns on this list. They are all paid, which is a note I will make, but I think they're well worth it. She has a lot of good single skein fingering weight shawls and cowls, a good number of fingering weight cowls, I think fewer shawls that are DK or worsted weight, maybe sport, and quite a few good scrappy options if you're looking for things to stash bust and make a gift at the same time, like her leftover city cowl, which is for fingering weight yarn. She has quite a few good 
options that would work well for scrappy projects like the scrap town cowl leftover city cowl i believe there's color frenzy is one that i'm thinking of and larimer street so those are all options if you're looking for a way to use up a lot of yarn that you might have sitting around and make something for either yourself or a friend or a loved one. Without further ado, let's get into the fingering weight patterns. I'll start out with two free fingerless mitt patterns. The first is the Pioneer Gloves by Kelly McClure. Those are a simple ribbed fingerless mitt. There's an all over three by two rib pattern across the whole mitt um, and a slight roll to the cuff. And these come in adult small, medium, and large in both long and short sizes. Estimated yardage is about 110 to 200 yards of yarn, so you might be able to get two to three pairs of these gloves, depending on how long you wanted to make them and what size you were making pretty comfortably out of a single skein. And there's a few recommended yarns for this, and they're Superwash Merinos, or 7525 merino nylon sock yarns so this would be a good option if you have a lot of sock yarn a lot of merino fingering in your stash although i'm sure other types of yarn would work very well i would just say that swatching would be extra important to make sure that the fabric would turn out how you would like it would also be very easy to customize the length of these make them longer shorter whatever you were interested in to use up more yarn or to make them more warm the gauge of this given is 13 stitches and 40 13 stitches and 40 rows in the ribbed pattern. I do wonder if that's like a bit of a typo, if it's supposed to be maybe 33, um, because the gauge given for stockinette, which is always interesting to me, I guess it's good to have um, that kind of standard measurement and maybe you've made a swatch of this yarn before, but the stockinette gauge given is 30 stitches and 44 rows. This seems like it would be a good pattern for almost any type of yarn and most people. I think it would look good in a solid color or a more tonal yarn, but it would also look good in variegated and speckled yarns. You could even go for a self-striping yarn if you had some of those in your stash. I think this pattern would also work pretty well for any gender as well. The second mitt pattern I'll talk about is the Cloudburst Gloves by Ariane Gray. This is a fingerless mitt knit in stockinette with a beautiful lace panel down the back. It's written for one size only, which is a women's medium, which they give as a 6.8 inch circumference of the hand. This is written at a gauge of 30 stitches and 45 rows for a four inch square in stockinette. And the estimated yardage is 153 to 164 yards of yarn. The recommended yarn for this is a discontinued Norwegian non-superwash wool. So that's something to keep in mind as you are planning this pattern. I think this would be a good introduction to lace. It doesn't look like a very complicated lace pattern. Most of the glove is stockinette. And I think it would be a relatively easy stitch repeat to memorize so something that you don't necessarily have to pay too much attention to but it would be enough to keep the knit pretty engaging even if you are a more experienced lace knitter and i think this could be easily made longer or a bit shorter by changing the number of lace repeats that you do next i'll talk about two hat patterns one paid and one free the paid hat pattern is the morning star hat by Becca Holm Designs. So this is an all over texture hat with, it looks like maybe alternating decreases, increases and all over ribbing. So it makes these kind of wavy rib sections that go into each other. I'll put up a picture. I don't know how well that description does it justice. There are two sizes, adult small and large to fit a circumference from 17 to 24 inches. And the gauge is 48 stitches by 48 rows over four inches in two by two rib. This uses 262 to 317 yards of yarn approximately. And the yarn that is recommended is a merino nylon superwash sock yarn. And I think this would be great for a stray 
solid color tonal or maybe lightly variegated yarn you have in your stash. This hat does have a small folded brim and if you wanted to use it more or less yarn you would be able to either add length to that brim I think or omit the folded brim and just knit the hat straight and that way you could get away with having a little bit less yarn if you had under a skein. On Ravelry right now this is five pounds 50 and approximately seven US dollars. I just think this texture looks really interesting and like it would be a fun knit. The second hat pattern I have for you is free and that is the two by two by Ida Wanstead. This is a simple two by two hat with a folded brim. It's written for a superwash merino nylon sock blend. It's only written for one finished circumference, so 20 inches is the final circumference of the hat as given, and the gauge is 37 stitches and 50 rows in two by over four inches in two by two rib. The estimated yardage is 252 yards of yarn, so a little over half of a skein. This has a little bit of a slouch at the top, so it would be pretty easy to adjust the yardage as always by omitting the folded brim, making the folded brim larger, making it more or less fitted to the top of your head, so there's definitely options there. And I think because it's a simple stitch repeat, you could probably add stitches in, usually I think hats are increments of 16. I'm not certain here, but if you added more or less stitches, you could probably adjust the finished size of the hat as well. I think this would look great in any kind of yarn. It could lean more masculine, more feminine, however you wanted it to, depending on the recipient. And you could even do stripes if you're looking to stash bust, so I think this is just a very versatile pattern. Next, I have two neckwear patterns. They're both shawls and they're triangular, although they look a little bit different. The first pattern is Paid, and it is Sand Bubbles by Greta Menson. This is 679 euros, or approximately 750 US dollars. This is kind of a kerchiefy triangle shawl that has eyelets along the long v-neck edge, and the rest is mostly stockinette with these garter ridges every couple rows that makes it look almost kind of ribbed. This is written for a gauge of 27 stitches and 36 rows per four inches of stockinette, and the yardage is 273 to 317 yards. And this was written with a 100% superwash merino yarn in mind. Because I think this is knit from corner to corner, so increasing from the corner you start in and then decreasing to the end. I think it would be easy to customize the amount of yarn that you used for this. If you have a kitchen scale, you would be able to just weigh it. And once you've used about half of the yarn that you have, you would be able to start the decreases to make sure that you had enough yarn and you used basically all of the yarn that you had. I really like this pattern. I think it's very pretty. It looks like it would be really fun to knit. I've never knit a shawl. I'm trying to think. I don't think I've knit a shawl that has that like increasing and then decreasing. All of my triangle shawls have just started at the small end and then grown until you bind off at the top, if that makes sense. So this is one that I think I would strongly consider making for myself and I think it would be a really fun and pretty easy but engaging knit to make for somebody on your list. The free shawl that I have for you is the Be Simple Variations by Carolyn Gloss Tawdrink. This is a more elongated triangular shawl. It's written in all over garter with an eyelet pattern, and it's written to take a whole 100 gram skein of fingering white yarn, probably more of the superwash merino sock variety of yarn, um, so 400 to 450 yards. The gauge given for this is 18 stitches and 30 rows over a four inch square of garter. And this one seems like it would be a pretty easy knit, something you could just go until you finish the yarn that you have and would be a good option for like a special skein. I do like when a shawl is written at a rather loose gauge because it allows you to get more length for your yarn out of the shawl. And this one also has an optional pico bind off 
if you want a little bit of additional flair. So this would be a good one if you have any shawl wearers in your life who would be interested. I have two baby knits. Again, one paid and one free. First one is the paid pattern, and this is the Itty Bitty Pretty Sweater by Maison Den. Maison Dene. I'm very sorry for my French attempts. Uh, this is a raglan sweater. It retails for seven US do dollars, and it's made for babies and kids, and only the smaller sizes are going to take up one skein. So this is available in sizes between three months and six years, and the estimated yardage is 300 to 630 yards of yarn. And this pattern is written with a sock yarn in mind as well. The gauge of this is 28 stitches and 32 rows, uh, over four inches in stockinette. This pattern just has a really pretty lace detail down the front, and it has yarn over eyelet increases along the raglan seams, which I always like as a detail. They're also really fun to knit because you don't have to remember any directionality or do any picking up. You just have to do a quick yarn over. So I I enjoy those myself. I always enjoy a lace pattern like this because it's pretty easy. You can fly through a lot of the stockinette and then you just have this lace panel where you have to do a little bit of something interesting that hopefully wouldn't be too hard to generally memorized so you don't have to have the pattern in your face all the time. I can easily see myself making this for a baby in my life. I think it's very cute. I just, I really like a lace panel like this. So this is something I would definitely consider making. The other pattern is a free pattern and this one's a cardigan. This is the Coco Cardigan by Claudia Quintanilla of Unit Toronto. This is just a basic circular yoke crew neck cardigan. It is knit for babies and children from sizes zero to three months all the way up to 10 years. The first couple sizes you would be able to get away with using 100 grams likely, at least if you're looking for a full-length sweater with long sleeves. If you have a more cropped sweater, if you make it shorter sleeves, you would definitely be able to get your yarn to go a little bit farther. This is written with an alpaca merino bamboo rayon yarn in mind, which has been discontinued. Uh, that's Canopy Fingering by the Fiber Company. And it's written at a gauge of 25 stitches and 36 rows for four inches in stockinette. And the yardage ranges from 366 yards up to 1,098 yards. Now the sample photos of this are all striped, so that would be an option for you. It would be very easy to knit this in a single color, of course, but if you did have, for example, one main color and a bunch of scraps that you would use for stripes, or even two skeins of yarn, one that you could use for your main color and one that you could use for the stripes, you would be able to knit a significantly larger size. I'm always on the lookout for free baby patterns, particularly cardigans. I don't know why I really I don't make that many cardigans for myself, but I really want to make them for babies a lot of the time. And I don't know why that is. Maybe because it feels, from what I hear, it feels like it's probably easier for the parents on some level to have something that you can unbutton and take off without having to pull it over the baby's head. But again, I don't have kids yet, so I don't know if that is true. Um, but I'm always on the lookout for a free pattern, and I, and I think this one would be a good template for stash busting or using up extra fingering weight baby yarn, maybe, that you have in your stash. My last fingering weight suggestion is just a bit of miscellaneous fun. This is Snooker the Balloon Dog by Jamie McCandless. This is just a little knit balloon dog like it's knit in the shape of a balloon dog this is a paid pattern it's five us dollars and it only takes about 45 yards of fingering weight yarn it's written at a really tight gauge of 10 stitches per inch because you are going to be stuffing it so you don't want the stuffing to be coming out and i just think this is a really cute pattern i think you know it's something you could maybe give to a child it might make a good Christmas ornament for a tree. If you really wanted to go wild, you could make maybe a garland of them or something. You could keep it on your desk at work or at home if that was something that you liked. I just think it's cute. And 
a good way to use up a little bit of extra yarn. Now I'll go ahead and talk about some sport weight patterns. So first I have two hats again. The first one is a paid pattern and it is the Hat for Thorin by Nicole Larkin York. This is seven US dollars. And this hat is written with this very interesting intertwining cable pattern. I'm not sure I know how to describe it, but it almost has like a diamond chain link fence kind of detail. The cables are together and they're like intertwined and then they separate and then they come together and intertwine again. Um, I will make sure to show a picture of it. The pattern gives the gauge of 32 stitches and four rows over four inches in pattern and they call this pattern rupee cables. When I googled that I wasn't able to find anything about it so I don't know if that's a standard term. I'm not the most experienced cable knitter but it doesn't look like super hard cabling. Um, it just has like an interesting look that I'm not super familiar with. This hat is inspired by Thorin Oakenshield, the character from The Hobbit, so it might be good if you have any Lord of the Rings Hobbit Tolkien fans in your life. And it comes in four sizes, 16 to 22 inches, to fit head sizes of 18 to 26 inches, so this might work for an older child as well as adults. I'm not super up on how big kids' heads are, but I know mine is 21 inches around and I'm not like that big of a person. The yardage for this is estimated at 177 to 288 yards of yarn and it's written with a 100% merino superwash yarn in mind. This has a bit of a slouch to it so you might be able to knit it a bit tighter. I think this one might be hard to adjust too much because it does have this cable pattern so I think you would want to finish all of your cable repeats properly for this. It also starts with some cabling in the initial ribbing of the hat so I think it would be harder to make this into something with a folded brim for example but you could play around with that if you were interested in using more yarn. The other hat pattern I have is a free pattern and this is the one More Mistake Beanie by Knit Q. This is a beanie knit in all over mistake rib and it has a standard one by one ribbed cuff. It's written for one size adult mediums. It does note that you can change the stitch count in increments of 16 if you want to make a smaller or larger hat. And the gauge of this is 24 stitches over 4 inches in pattern, comfortably stretched. The yardage estimate of this is 208 to 241 yards as mentioned, and you could mod this as the pattern notes to make it larger or smaller. You could also, again, alter the cuff, the slouch of the hat, etc. to change your yardage and change the size of the hat. I just really like different rib variations. I've been really interested in making a mistake rib piece myself, so I think that this could be really fun and a good alternative to a basic ribbed beanie if you wanted something with a little bit more flair. Next, I have two pieces of neckwear. First is the Gold Branch by Melanie Rice. This pattern is six US dollars. And this is a triangular bias knit cowl. So it is something that you are knitting flat and seaming and it has a triangle shape with a branch running down one edge. The recommended yarn for this is Malabrigo Arroyo, which I think is pretty well known and relatively well available. That is a like heavy-ish, I suppose, sport weight yarn and um, a superwash merino. And there are three sizes of this, uh, 18, 19, and 20 inch circumferences for the neck. Um, and it takes 230 to 330 yards of yarn. So if you're knitting one of the larger sizes, you will probably be coming up pretty close to a full skein. The gauge of this is 20 stitches over four inches in garter. And I've been getting really into cowl knitting and shawl knitting this year. This isn't a uh, one that I've knit before. And I haven't really knit this tight before where you're knitting a cowl flat and then seaming it. But I just think it's really pretty. I think the little branch detail is very 
uh, delicate and pretty and this is something that I would strongly consider making for myself out of an extra skein of like a tona or solid colored sport weight yarn. The next one is a free pattern. This is the low-key bandana by low-key bold knit. This bandana has an all-over eyelet mesh pattern and it's given gauge is 20 stitches and 42 rows in four inches of the stitch pattern. Um, it says it will take approximately 175 yards of yarn. This appears to be knit from the bottom corner out, so you're starting at the bottom and increasing along both sides to make it get bigger equally on each side. So that would be pretty easy to just knit until you ran out of yarn and then making sure that you had enough for the bind off. This is written with an Egyptian cotton yarn in mind, drops saffron, and that's a, a yarn that's 175 yards per 50 grams. So it's written to use exactly one 50 gram ball, but gauge isn't super important and yarn type, I would say, is not super important for something like this. Of course, because it's a very holy pattern, it could work really well as a warmer weather shawl, which I think is what it's intended for because it is made out of this cotton yarn. But if you wanted to make something that was a little bit warmer, you could probably go pretty easily for a more woolly yarn. I have two baby sweaters to talk about. Unfortunately, they are both paid patterns, but I think they're very cute. The first one is the baby sundial sweater by uh, Iris of Iris Makes. This sweater is six pounds 50 or about 833 US dollars at the time of recording. And I've tested it for Iris before. I really like her patterns. She is also a neuroscientist and knitter, just like me, which is always fun. And the sweater has a circular yoke and this like ridged pearl rib almost detail that runs along the sweater. It kind of radiates out from the yoke, which I think is how the sweater gets its name. This pattern does come in an adult sweater version and a top or like a tee version as well and this is something I've considered knitting for myself actually. It does come in seven sizes this baby sweater from newborn to 24 months and it uses an estimated yardage of 252 to 437 yards. It's written with a superwash merino yarn in mind and if you are looking at something that comes in 50 gram skeins you could probably get away with using three of them, so about 150 grams instead of a whole 200, if that's an option for you when you're purchasing yarn or looking in your stash for this. And I bet if you made the sweater short sleeved, you may be able to make one or two sizes larger than what you would have if you were making a full length sweater version. I just like this pattern a lot. I think it would be really cute. I'd like to make one of the adult versions obviously for myself, so I thought I would mention it here. The second sweater I'll talk about is the Matilda sweater by Laura Menendez. This is 750 euros or about 837 US dollars. This is just a simple raglan sweater, but it has these floral details embroidered on it afterwards with your yarn. It comes in five sizes, zero to three months, up to 18 to 24 months, and it takes 197 to 252 yards and the recommended yarn for this is a merino cotton blend that is not super wash treated so that's something to keep in mind if you are planning to use something else make sure that you swatch very carefully it seems like this would take at least with the recommended yarn and going with the sizing properly less than 100 grams of yarn for any size which is very cool i always think it's great when you can get your yarn to go really far for a pattern. And I just think the embroidery is really cute um, and something you could do a lot with. If you wanted it to stay subtle, you could leave it in the color of the yarn that you use for the sweater as is written, but if you wanted to go a little bit more bold with it, you could go stash diving. You could look for different colors that, you know, contrast to varying degrees with the yarn that you use for your main sweater, or even make each flower a different color if that was something you were interested in. I just know I've never done embroidery on my knitting, and 
I've been thinking about trying it. I think it would be fun, but I don't really know where I would start. And something like a baby sweater like this feels relatively low stakes because it's a pretty quick sweater to, to knit up. Of course you want it to be cute, but the baby is cute. So that might be able to help you mask any uh, less than good embroidery just because the baby will look cute wearing it. Um, so I think that this seems pretty low stakes and it is mentioned that this would be good for people who have never done any sort of um, knitwear embroidery. The last pattern I have for you is a general home item pattern. This is the Eileen bag by Hannah Mason and it's just a mesh knit market bag with a ribbed edging and strap. This is free and it's made in one size at a gauge of 20 stitches and 26 rows in, in stock and net it says, but it's knit and mesh. I think for something like this, gauge is not super important. The recommended yarn is 100% linen and 270 yards per 100 grams and it's knit to use a whole skein. Um, and it looks pretty big when knit to pattern but you could extend your single skein and do a few more repeats if you wanted to add a contrast um, edging and strap, if you had any scraps that you wanted to use up. I think this one would be really great if you have any single skeins of like a plant-based yarn you have in your stash that you're looking for. A lot of these patterns and things we think about making in general, and a lot of the single skeins I have are some sort of woolly yarn superwash merino sock yarn like a merino nylon blend so it's nice to have options that are for a relatively small quantity of yarn that are for plant-based fiber in case you have any of those in your stash that's all that I have for you today. I hope you found some inspiration in those patterns. If you have single skeins of DK worsted bulky or super bulky yarns that you are looking to make a gift out of, I do have some ideas coming up for that over the next few days, so definitely check out those videos. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. I make videos about knitting at least once a week. Thanks so much for joining. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye.